Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Resilient Health Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Darren Ingalls, and rejoining me on the podcast today is Margie Bissinger. Uh, you may have tuned into a previous episode. I spoke with her early last year. Uh, Margie is a physical therapist. She is an expert in osteoporosis. And again, today we're going to talk about everything related to bones and osteoporosis. So Margie, welcome back to the podcast. Oh, thanks for inviting me. I'm so glad to be here. So I talked to you a little over a year ago, and I just want to share a quick story because we were just talking about this before we came on. Uh, last year, you talked about you know parathyroid hormone and how important it is for bone health. Uh, and my mother, my own, my own mother, ha had this very high parathyroid hormone. And I kept telling her for over a year, I'm like, Mom, your 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 parathyroid is hyperactive; it needs to be investigated. And one of the guests on your previous summit, Dr. Adiva Boone, uh, who is a parathyroid surgeon who happens to be in Phoenix, where my mother lives. So my mother went to see Dr. Boone. Come to find out she had a three inch tumor on her parathyroid gland that was very successfully removed and my mother's felt so much better afterwards so thank you for having dr boone on your summit but uh, just showing the power of you know how these conversations can lead to people really having better health including my other mother so i i just thought i'd share that story before we get into the weeds about osteoporosis but uh that was just kind of a an interesting takeaway from my last conversation with you you know, it's funny, though, the first summit, 20 people who heard Dr. Boone's talk ended up figuring out they needed surgery. That was missed by their physicians. That's and the amazing. same with the and she's on this summit as well. So, yes, it's just incredible that, you know, that this is a major cause of bone loss and it's often missed. And how sad is that, that people are suffering for no reason? So for people who might be new to the idea of, you know, bone loss, osteoporosis, can you just give us a quick through on what osteoporosis is? Sure. So definition, osteoporosis means porous bones. And it, there's a couple things. So it means that it's the both the quantity and the quality of bone, but the way that it's picked up, the way that it's evaluated and the definition is, is by a DEXA, a bone density test. And they look at your bone density and compare that to a 30 year old. And then they look at standard deviations away from that. So if you're zero to minus one, they consider that normal. Minus one to minus 2.5 is considered osteopenia and anything lower than minus 2.5 is considered osteoporosis. So it's a bit random, you know, in terms of how they're making the definition. And it doesn't have anything when you do the DEXA by itself, it doesn't have anything to do with the quality. It's just telling you the quantity of the bone. So you know, that's, I, yeah, I always found it very odd that they compare you with age match individuals and then they compare you with a 30 year old. And we know that you naturally lose bone with age to a certain degree. So why do they even bother comparing you with a 30 year old? Yeah. And that's really the T-score is what they're using to determine treatment, to determine everything else. That's just how they figured it out, I guess, to see how weak or, you know, the changes in your bone, how that's, because if you compare it to somebody your age, everybody has bone loss. So it doesn't really give you that much information. So I guess that's just how they, not that I'm saying that's good, but that's just the way that they've looked at it. Fortunately, there's something called a trabecular bone score that people can get in addition to the DEXA. And that's a measurement of bone quality. So if you're, not all DEXA machines do that, but many of them, you know, not many of them, I would say, you know, you can find, you can, you can Google trabecular bone score TBS and see what, what DEXA units bone density also has that. So you can also get a measurement of quality. Well, I appreciate that you're talking about quality of bone versus quantity of bone. Like I said, DEXA is measuring quantity of bone, but not necessarily quality. And, you know, I've heard the, uh, sort of the euphemism that, you know, sometimes, you know, medical treatment is like making glass thicker. It's still glass. It's not concrete. And we really want your bone to be concrete. You know, what do you think about the current, you know, treatment approaches of just using medication to try and help rebuild bone? Yes, exactly what you said. And the sad thing is in conventional medicine, typically what I see is that people are given, you know, calcium, vitamin D. Those are usually the two supplements, you know, calcium, vitamin D. They do say exercise, but always not in detail. And it's very important what type of exercise, if you're really trying to build bone, we can go into that. But then a lot of times they're just, if it's minus 2.5, medication. And the couple of problems, number one, they're not looking at the root causes. What is causing this bone loss? 
Is it something that you just never accrued a lot of bone as a child? You know, you were you were you had issues with your eating or digestion or something, or are you actively losing bone from inflammation or from some process going on? So if you're not looking at the root causes, you're not going to be effective. Number one, it's like putting a band aid on. Number two, and so my 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 feeling in terms of medication is, and I've changed my tune in some sense because the key is. We want to prevent fractures. Nobody wants to have a hip or spinal fracture because the consequences are absolutely devastating. And, and the statistics are awful. One in two women over 50 in, in the United States and one in three worldwide will have a fracture due to osteoporosis in their lifetime. Wow. And it's one in four men in the United States and one in five <clears throat> worldwide. So this is something that's affecting so many of us. And and a lot of people, you know, are are completely against medication. But sometimes if you real if you've already had fractures and your bones are at a certain state, it can bide you time. And that's really how I look at it. That only, you know, there now are these new bone building medications, but they're not to use full time, but to at least so protect you for a short period of time for those people who have very low bone density and have had fractures. And then during that time, you're figuring out root causes, you're figuring out what's underlying, you're getting your habits set, and then you can go off it. But for most people, what's happening currently, I feel that they're missing the boat. You need to figure out what's going on, be a detective. You know, I always, I actually look at it as an opportunity, a diagnosis of osteoporosis to just stop. Let's see, because the bones are not, as you know, the bones are not in isolation. When something's going on with your bones, usually there are other things going on. And so you can stop, figure out the issues, and then start dealing with them. And the good part about that is all the things that you do for your bones will improve your overall health. You'll become much stronger. You'll be much healthier. And so your whole life really gets better when you address these things. And people look back and they're like, wow, this was the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> well, I appreciate, you know, that you mentioned that, you know, it's not like medication doesn't have a place. And like everything in medicine, it's kind of where do you intervene? How severe is the illness? Uh, and like you said, if it buys you time to really help address these underlying root causes, you know, that's a win. If that's going to help prevent you from, you know, snapping a hip or you know breaking your spine, that's that's a huge win. And again, I see this in my own practice, a lot of people who are just so adamant of never wanting to take medication. And of course, it's not generally our our initial start, but we also have some people whose level of illness is so severe that you need that level of heroic medicine to, as I said, help you at least get to a further point in your health where we can start to address all these underlying issues, which I guess leads us to the next section is, you know, what are some of these underlying issues you see in your practice that are leading to osteoporosis? I see a lot of digestive issues and, you know, people don't realize, and especially that's the scary thing. Sometimes the doctors will put people on Fosamax, Actinel, you know, these bisphosphonates orally, and they already have digestive issues. So it totally compounds the problem. It's really, you know, so I see a lot of digestive issues where people are not absorbed. Even you can be eating a good diet and you're just not absorbing your nutrients. And so, you know, any type of digestive issue, I see a tremendous amount of people having problems with gluten. Uh, I, I get people tested on the wheat zoomer test or, you know, some type of gluten test to just see, and not just celiac disease, but to really see if they have any sensitivity. And I would say 90, at least 90% of the people I see have an issue with gluten. And the interesting thing is once they get off it and the inflammation comes down, then their bone density actually increases and other things get better. Their arthritis gets better. You know, so many, their eczema gets better. But I do see that so commonly and on my summit where I interviewed over 50 experts, a, a numerous, you know, other integrative physicians and different people, practitioners said the same thing that they see this very commonly. So, you know, anything causing inflammation is going to cause the osteoclasts, which are the cells that break down bone, to increase activity. And so wherever there can be, it could be mold, could be so many of the things that you deal with that could also be affecting your bones as well with the inflammation. So I see definitely inflammation, definitely people who you know, have any type of digestive issues, as well as people who their diet, you know. They just are not getting their nutrients. They're living on, you know, the standard American diet, lots of sugar, 
and they're, you know, they're not getting the, the nutrients needed for your bones or even not getting enough protein. So diet plays a big role and exercise, you know, couch potatoes, that's, you know, that is an underlying root cause in terms of not, you know, you're not getting the forces and the bones necessary. So people lose bone just because of that. And stress, I have to say, I, I think that stress plays a big role and they've done studies on this, but I see that people are very stressed and that certainly is not helping your bone health. So it's all the combination. Usually it's not one, unless you know, with people like your mom who have a tumor on the parathyroid, that certainly, you know, is going to have a major effect on the bone. But typically there's, you know, there could be multiple factors going along at the same time. Yeah. Well, I, again, I think about my, my own mother. I remember she was diagnosed with osteopenia. I, I want to say she was probably in her early to mid fifties at the time. And, you know, we did some nutritional intervention and within a year we got 9% bone growth. Wow. Uh, it was remarkable. Um, but she at the time was also a heavy diet soda drinker. And, you know, there's pretty compelling evidence that this constant drinking of soda actually leaches, you know, your bone and, and weakens them. Absolutely. Yes. So diet, you know, I, I think Hippocrates said all illness begins in the gut, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and whether bones are no exception, yeah, it, absolutely yeah osteoporosis, true. cancer, diabetes, heart disease, autoimmune disease, you know, the gut is so important for so many different reasons. So what you put in your mouth makes a difference, your ability to eliminate and detoxify matters. And like I said, you know, your bones are no exception to that. And um, they've even done research now on the diversity of the microbiome, and that plays a major role in bone health. So yes, that's such a big part of it. Well, I know you wrote a book about exercise and osteoporosis. You know, one of the I, I want to say complaints, but one of the struggles I have with a lot of people I work with is getting them to move. And I think their idea of movement is I got to go to the gym. I got to do, you know, whatever they have in their mind about this sort of hardcore exercise to build bone. Can you set the record straight on uh, what do really people really need to do in terms of movement to start building bone again? OK, well, the truth is what the research has showed is that it is the type of exercise that actually increases bone is resistance training, like high intensity though, resistance training and impact training. That's the very best. That's There was a study done called the LIFMORE trial in Australia. And they took people who had low bone density osteoporosis and the key was they did two months of instructing them on safe practices. And this was supervised, but they had to do some serious lifting. And they did fantastic. They did incredible. And they've, they've um, since that time, they've started a bone clinic in Australia and it's called Onero program. And they've actually are bringing that. There's a few places, actually there's only one place right now, which is 20 minutes from where I live in the United States doing it. But the point is they are finding that it is this intense exercise that's actually causing people to, to significantly improve their bone density. And so, and so that's truly what works. Now, the key with that is that it has to be done safely. And so, and, and so, you know, that's where a physical therapist come in. You know, it's not as though you should just go to the lift more study and start doing those exercises yourself because they are pretty intense. So that's what, what does seem to work. They use something of was 85% of one repetition max. So depending where you were, it was working somewhat hard. But the good news, so that's that's the best situation when there's both resistance and impact training. And impact, even they've done studies where people are their own subject, where they've hopped on one leg and mm -hmm. they gained bone density in that hip versus the other leg they, where they lost. And so, so to truly gain bone in that way, you really do need to do the resist. It, 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 it's true. You do have to work at it, but it doesn't have to be a long period of time, you know, twice a week. And what's so great when you do strength training, any kind of strength training, is you start feeling empowered. You start feeling stronger and there's just nothing better. So, so that's truly what the new research is showing, that that's what's truly building bone. Now you can maintain bone with not as intense exercise. And I've had patients who do, you know, any different types of resistance. They've done Pilates with the reformer or some of the machines at the health club. 
you know, but the key is this, the bones respond to the forces placed upon it. So when you're contracting a muscle against the resistance, you know, whatever it is, it's saying, hey, it's pulling and tugging on that, you know, the muscles pulling and tugging on that bone. It's like, hey, we need more bone there. So it is that resistance. It's not the repetitions. The studies have shown, you know, eight to 10 repetitions in this trial they did. They went down eventually to five sets of five repetitions. So it's working it's the resistance that seems to be, and the impact, but it has to be done safely. That's the key. So not everybody's going to start jumping and doing all of these things. So, but the, on the other hand, how do people fall? The main thing we want to do is prevent fall. Most people, I mean, most people have a fracture because they have a fall. Every single person can do balance and you know, balance exercises, posture exercises to prevent falls. And it's very, very effective. And so to me, no matter where you are, you can certainly do, and, and my favorite is actually Tai Chi and Qigong, because you're moving through space and people have really improved their, you know, improved their balance. But any type of balance training is is so, so important. No matter, you know, and again, the resistance, if you're someone that hasn't done any type of resistance, just, you know, bending your arm, you know, or just against gravity is going to be a start. So I think anywhere people can start, but what's truly been shown in the research is the resistance, more high, you know, higher intensity, lower reps, resistance and the impact training. And, but it's exciting because nobody got hurt. You know, they were yeah. saying, can this be done safely? And now they've, it's been many years and now they have clinics all over Australia doing this type of program with people, with osteoporosis. So very exciting. On my summit that's coming up, I'm Dr. Belinda Beck. She's the person who was involved with these studies. She talks about this and it was exciting speaking to her because these women are so empowered. They're lifting more than their husbands. And she was just telling, <laughs> telling these stories, how great people feel when they're stronger. So, so that type of exercise, any balance, I think is very important. But again, you want to love it. So dance, you know, anything also weight bearing, you know, when you're getting weight through the bones against gravity, sure, that's going to help prevent bone loss. So you, you may not be gaining so much bone, but you're certainly going to prevent bone loss. And the other amazing thing was on their study, when they looked at it through, she was saying, um, Belinda, when they looked at it through this different type of imaging, it actually changed the architecture of the hip right in the area where it's most likely to fracture. So how exciting is that? So yeah, so exercise to me is no matter who you are, where you are, you can do some type of exercise and it's going to make a big difference for your bones. And, you know, you know, I'm a big believer in, and usually it's covered in the United States, it's covered if you have osteoporosis to see a physical therapist. So I'm a big believer in getting the help. So you're doing things correctly in good posture, good form. Well, I, I, I like your point that, again, this can be done at any fitness level. You know, again, you don't have to go hardcore, at least to start, but getting yeah. some movement, like I said, Tai Chi, Qigong, these are very gentle exercises. I mean, come on, you see these 90-year-old people in China out every day doing Tai Chi in the courtyard, and it's slow, it's gentle, it's low impact, but it's enough that, again, it can just start, you know, getting your blood moving, getting your lymph moving, and ultimately, you know, stimulating that bone growth. So for people who are very high risk, of fracture, you know, doing something gentle like this may be a very easy way just to introduce movement into in your life on a regular basis. But like I said, it's got to be something you love to do. We all have the experience of trying something. We hate it. If we hate it, we're not going to do it. So you got to find something that you can do on a regular basis and actually come out feeling good about it. You know, it's interesting because we started, I'm trying to think how many years ago, another physical therapist who's also a Qigong master. And so we started this Bone Strong Qigong program. And it's amazing. I got my husband doing it. And the, so the participants, I can't even get over. So many people said, you know, they were about to trip and they didn't because they've been practicing this movement. But also you're enjoying it. You're getting flow of chi and you're doing squats and you're doing different things. So you're really building both strength, balance, plus it's relaxing and it's just good for your whole system. People were sleeping better. They were less stressed. So it's such a, you know, it's a mind body. So it's such a win-win. 
Well, I know you're someone who is an avid researcher and you look at all the new uh, research coming out. Is there anything else that you've come across that uh, listeners might be interested to know relating to osteoporosis? I think the exercise is a big deal. I'm trying to think if there's anything new. I mean, there's good information on vitamin K2, which I think is missing. A lot of times the doctors will say, you know, take vitamin, you know, take calcium, take vitamin D, but they totally miss K2. And K2 is what puts the calcium into your bones, sweeps it out of the soft tissue. And so I mean, there's research on both types, you know, MK7 and MK4. But I think that's an area that I just don't know why it's not more in mainstream medicine. And it upsets me. But so I think that's, you know, research continues to come out on that as well as the microbiome. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any major new thing, you know, in terms of nothing, nothing revolutionary. I mean, that would be nice. <laughs> but I well, think it's the same messages. It's the same messages. Reduce stress, you know, the food, impact the food, probiotics, the gut, all of those things continue to have studies showing how important all of this is. Well, you did a summit last year, and I know you have another summit coming up soon. Can you share with our listeners a little bit about when it is and, you know, maybe talk about some of the people who will be speaking on it? Okay, great. Yes, I'm really excited because it starts January 15th, and it's you know, free for the week. And there's just what I did this year. So I there were certain things that people wanted. People really wanted to know about the medications. That became something that people... So there's Dr. Keith McCormick, who's probably one of the best people I know, who uses medication like we talked about. He's very into natural approaches and supplements and figuring out root causes. But if someone's at risk for a fracture, you know, he uses it just as needed. And so he goes over all the pros and cons of the medications and how you can use them in an integrative approach, as well as the important testing, like a CTX with P1MP, which you know, measures bone breakdown. So I think that talk, and that talk's available right now. So someone, if anyone opts in for the summit, they'll get that talk right away. So I think that but that's really because so many people ask for that. You know, my doctor wants to put me in prolia. What what are the risks? What are you know, so so people understand? And he's sort of a um, role model because he was someone in his forties who had severe, you know, really terrible osteoporosis, was fracturing left and right, and he found out he had underlying root causes, but had to go on Forteo for a short period of medication. And then he was able to treat it. But now he does triathlons. He does marathons. He does Ironman. So he's, <laughs> you know, a role model that everything's possible and anything's possible. So I think that talk's really pretty amazing. Um, Dr. Sherry Betts is one of my friends and an amazing physical therapist who trains other physical therapists. So she goes through all the research, all the latest research on exercise and spends a half hour demonstrating the exercises. I thought that was important on the summit because you could tell people do this, 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 but you know, how do you do it safely? And she goes over the yoga and Pilates poses that are, because a lot of them are not safe. You know, what's safe, what's not, how do you make modifications? So that's the first day. So I highly recommend that. And, and then Dr. Kim Millman, who's been doing integrative osteoporosis care for 15 years now. So she's used this integrative approach very effectively. So she goes through a whole masterclass where she really talks about some of the root causes, how you would test what you can do. So I think that's that's quite amazing. And we learned how to what a home gym is and what, how you can set that up at home. And in terms of Qigong, the person I was telling you about, he explains Qigong and then takes us through. I, I think it's, I don't remember how, how long it was, but, uh, you know, a nice little practice that you could put into your life. So lots of tools. I really wanted to give people the knowledge and the tools that they could get started right away. And so there's, yeah, so there's just so many different, there's people on mast cell activation, on mold, you know, different root causes, blood sugar, we didn't mention, which is a root cause as well. We you know what you can do to help stabilize your blood sugar. So lots of different lots of different avenues in terms of evaluation and then lots of different tools. And right away we talked about balance. So one of the, one of the gifts when people register, I did a, a, some, a video on, I forgot how many, but maybe it's seven or nine different balance exercises you could do right away that will make such a difference. And I put a little Qigong in 
as well. So just easy things you can do and as well as a checklist for your house. Because sometimes people fall because a rug is is too, you know, they fall on their rug. So sometimes you don't realize what what, you know, household items could be dangerous. So it goes through a little checklist. So anyway, that's it in a nutshell. And then every morning I do happiness habits because you know me, I'm very big into um, teaching happiness. And I think that's that's a, one of the foundations of, of good health. So every morning I give everybody like just one quick thing to do for their day. Well, I know last year's summit was absolutely fantastic and very well received. I can only imagine this year is going to be even better. And you've got a few new people added to the list. And uh, for those who've been dealing with osteoporosis, and if you have a, a friend or family member who's been dealing with this, please pass the information along. We're going to drop the link to the summit in the show notes uh, that you'll definitely want to register. And again, it's absolutely free. Uh, you got so many great experts talking about all these different aspects. And I love the fact that you bring in people to do demonstrations where you can actually see for yourself this is how you actually do it you can you know you'll have the option at the end of the summit if you want to buy this summit if you love it so much i know that'll be available but uh, having practical tools that you can start incorporating into your life today i think is huge so we we always appreciate when you get practical tools that you can do in your daily life oh well thanks yeah it's just it's i always get i mean this year there's eight new talks that are that we've <clears> added and then there's just you know, a lot of information, but the key, the key, so everybody listening, if you're listening to this, don't get overwhelmed. I always tell this to everyone, because it can be, you know, you can think like, oh my gosh, I have to look at my root causes and I have to change my exercises and I have to change my food. You don't, it, it's not something that happens immediately. This took a long time to get, and you don't have to, it's not an emergency situation. You do one thing at a time and you just move on. And then, you know, when you, when you change lifestyle slowly, one step at a time, it becomes sustainable and it's doable and it works. And then you look back and you're like, wow, I made all these great changes. All right. Well, the summit starts on January 15th. I said, we'll drop the link into the show notes. And Margie, it's always a pleasure having you on the podcast. So thank you again for being here. Oh, thanks for having me.